The Morning Meditation Podcast, episode number 27. Fellow workers of Paul, Colossians chapter 4, verse 10 and 11. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, saluteth you. And Marcus, sister to, the, to Barnabas, touching whom you receive commandments. If he come unto you, receive him. And Jesus, which is called Justice, who are of the circumcision. These only are my fellow workers unto the kingdom of God which have been a comfort unto me. We are going to look at three of Paul's helpers in the next three meditations. These helpers, many times, are not mentioned. They are just as important as anyone else because God uses us together. Paul makes sure that we understand this. Of course, there are those who are not mentioned at all, because it is not important that men recognize our service. What is important is that we understand that we are the servants of Christ, and that He notices and will reward every believer at the judgment seat of Christ. We see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5. So the first one, Aristarchus, a man with a commitment. The first mention of him is found in Acts 19 verse 20, 29. And the whole city was filled with confusion. And having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the, into the theater. Aristarchus was caught along with Gaius by this riotous mob. The word caught means to seize by force. He is also identified as being from Macedonia. He is mentioned next in Acts chapter 20 verse 4, along with others as Paul's traveling companions, and no doubt fellow helpers in missions as he went into Asia. His next mention is in Acts 27 verse 2, where he continues with Paul by ship to Rome. He was caught in that great storm with Paul, where they almost lost their lives. He was there when Paul received revelation from the Lord that all personnel on the ship would be spared from physical death. We see that in Acts 27, verse 21 through 25. He is also mentioned in Philemon chapter 1 verse 24 where he is called a fellow laborer. One of the things that must be said about this man is that he was committed. When you traveled with Paul, you could get into trouble and you usually did. Service to the Lord in that day was costly. He was with Paul in in Ephesus during the riot, and was violently seized by the mob when Paul got away. I think he could have said, Hey, I didn't cause this riot. Paul is the one, and you let him get away. He lived in a day when Christians counted it a blessing and honor to be persecuted for the faith in Christ. We call this commitment. This is a word that is carelessly thrown around a lot today. If a pastor requires his Sunday school teachers to be faithful to all services, being in teachers' meeting, and to visit in the outreach of the church, you will often hear complaints. My friend, if one complains about faithfulness in these small matters, 
What in the world would he do if he were thrown into jail? We are living in an age where people say, Lord, I'll serve you if it doesn't cost too much. Aristarchus shows up on the ship with Paul in Acts 27. Aristarchus, I want to ask you a question. You got into bad trouble in Ephesus when Paul preached against the, against the goddess Diana and almost put her out of business. Aren't you a little afraid to travel with that man? He says, you do not understand. I made a commitment to serve the Lord no matter what the cost. I have learned more traveling with Paul, seeing him work, hearing him preach, than any experience I've ever had in my life. Until he runs me off, I'm traveling with him. And when you weren't in jail, you did travel. You were with Paul. He was always reaching out to preach where Christ was not named. Romans chapter 15 and verse 20. Paul warns them in Acts 27.10 that if they sail, they will run into serious trouble at sea. But the owner and master of the ship had no confidence in Paul's prophecy and sailed anyway. Aristarchus could have said, Paul, I think I'll get off here and strengthen the believers in this area, and I'll look you up later in Rome. In other words, Paul, I've been around you long enough to believe what you say when you've been talking to the Lord. I get seasick, and I'll see you later. That's what most modern, tailor-made Christians would do. But not Aristarchus. He was committed. I can even imagine Paul saying, Aristarchus, this ship is going to be in bad trouble. The Lord Jesus has told me that. And it's not going to be a minor problem. It's going to be a near-death experience. In fact, I don't have assurance at this point that we won't die. Why don't you get off and follow later? Aristarchus must have said, I'm not letting you out of my sight. When I'm around you, things happen, and not all of them are bad. I like it when God speaks to you and tells you what, and then you tell me what he says. No, Paul, I'm in the ship for the long haul. Aristarchus was committed. Then, in our text, he is in prison with Paul. Paul says he is my fellow prisoner. However, Paul mentions him in Philemon chapter 1, verse 24 as being one of his fellow laborers. Someone has suggested that he may have volunteered to be in prison with Paul to minister to his needs. That thought is in complete harmony with the commitment that this man had to the Lord. Incidentally, it is not wrong to be committed to a preacher today. It is wrong to follow that man into error. We do have the word of God, and that will reveal when he gets off base and starts wandering in the wrong direction. You say, I'm committed to the Lord and not to the preacher. Are you saying that Aristarchus was not committed to the Lord? I am grateful for the grace of God that enabled certain men and women to stand by me and hold up my hands in the ministry over the years. If I were naming them, as Paul did here, the first one would be my wife. Then there would be a list of others. Then there would be some that I would have to tell you that they were fair weather friends. I will talk no more about them. May God bless them before they die with a spirit of commitment that will steady them when it rains as well as when the sun shines. May the Lord bless these words to our hearts today.